Hi, welcome to my video on how to style medium length hair. Yes, that's right. A lot of you have been asking how I've been styling my hair lately. As most of you know, I normally wear my hair in this long, straight kind of style. I was going to say long, straight, stringy style, but that style is a lot easier. However, I am liking this style very much and let me know in the comments below if you like this style better or the, I won't say the long straight stringy style, or this style or the long style. Just choose one. So this video is to show you how to style medium length hair and it's a little bit of a challenge because it's not a cute short style, it's not very long hair, it's just medium hair, just a little bit below shoulder length. And if you're not a subscriber and you're say 40 plus, 50 plus, 60 plus, 70 plus, 80 plus, click that little bell and you'll be notified of my future videos. And if you could give me a thumbs up, that would be great too. Okay, in just a few moments, I'm going to take you into my bathroom and I'll show you how I style this hair from wet hair on up. But I will tell you there's a little something unusual about this video that happened in the middle of my styling session. And if you'd like to stick around and see that, it's a good example of how we get up in the morning and we never know what's going to happen that day. As you can see, I am in my bathroom. I'm going to go ahead and blow dry. I've applied my products and I have quite a few great products that really help me get thicker looking hair, but there's not enough time to tell you about that now. So if you're interested in that, subscribe and you will get a link to that video as soon as it is posted, which I plan to do that in a couple of days, so it should be soon. First I blow dry and get it about 80% dry. One thing I love is this Epic Professional brush. I got this at Ulta. It really does help dry your hair much faster. I use that brush to dry my hair and then I turn my hair over in order to give it more body. And then I blow dry each piece the opposite direction of my hair growth in order to give more body to my crown area. And then I do the exact same thing on the other side and I also do the back that way because it's important to get as much body as possible. Now we're about, I'd say, 80% dry. Just going to go ahead and clip this up with my little pink clip. And I have all of this mangy stuff to go. Now to finish drying it, I either use this large curling brush, which makes kind of just kind of a bend in your hair, or this smaller round brush, which makes a little bit more of a curl. So I'm going to use this one today. And I take the round metal brush and I try to really pull out the frizz in my hair and do it as tightly as possible. Roll each piece up and then I hit it with a blow dryer to give some heat to that metal. And I do that all over my head to smooth out the hair and put a small little curl in the end of each piece. And then I start going all around my head. I do one side and I'm probably doing maybe five curls on each side. And I always leave the brush in just a few moments when it's tightly curled because I really want the metal part of the hairbrush to heat up and curl that hair a little more. So I do a little pause there. And of course I'm doing the other side now. And I do both sides and then the back. It really doesn't take too long to do and it's kind of rewarding to get through it. Here we go. Okay, now. I'm going to go ahead and do the front. And I just take this little curling brush and go like this. I hold each piece maybe about five to six seconds. I try not to use the hottest setting, but sometimes I'm in a hurry, so I do. And I'll just get that upper, that upper part of the back there. It's pretty much dry, but it never hurts to get that little bubble back there. Now my hair is largely dry. Let's see if it really is. That's kind of how my hair looks when I just get it blow dried. And so basically what I'm doing is kind of pre-styling it because when I put the curlers in, I want them to kind of know where I want my hair to go. Next, I take my three inch Sally's brush rollers and here's what they look like. And I keep them in a little shoe box here that is by my vanity. Then I'm going to start with this back piece here. And then each time I just spray it just really quickly with a little camera. And I'm just going to roll that right back. Doesn't matter if you're a little bit messy. Here we go. Then I'll do this front piece. And again, I'll just give it a little spray, quick spray. 
Not too much hairspray, just a little. There we go. Then I'm going to get the piece in the back, which is right there. Just going to go ahead and do that. Give it a little spray. This whole process of curling my hair only takes about five minutes. I timed it. It's really very quick. But as you know, I tend to wear that straight style because it is really quick, quicker than this. And I have to make myself spend the extra time to do this hairstyle because it does take a little more time and a lot more hairspray, actually. <laughs> there we go, one there. And I'll do the other side. There we go. Okay, next, I've got this much hair left on either side. So next I'm going to take that back piece, which is right up here. The whole idea is to try to get this curler a little bit in towards the top. You're trying to create a little bit of a bubble or some lift there. So don't do it downwards. Make sure you lift it up. I got these curlers and clips from Sally's and I'll go ahead and put that in the links below the video. There we go. And this paddle brush I'm using, I actually get from Walmart and they have it in great colors, pink, purple, blue. And I think it's about five bucks and I love this. I've used more expensive brushes and I love this paddle brush. Okay, let's go ahead and do this last one on this side. Again, we're gonna spray it. Whoa, dropped one. Okay. And I originally saw Melissa55 do a variation of this. She used a hot iron with hers. Basically what she did is she took that flat iron and before every piece, she rolled it up in the flat iron and got it a little bit heated, a little bit hot. Then when she rolled the curlers into it, the idea was that it would cool down and the curl would stay better. I tried to use that and I had a little bit of difficulty using it, but I will link that below because she really had good luck using that. And I will also link her video below so you can see how she did it. And her style actually came out a little different than mine. Mine tends to come out a little more curly, which is kind of what I want. It's probably how my hair is cut. Whereas hers looks a little more straight and filled with body. She is awesome, by the way. If you'd like to, to meet Melissa of Melissa55, probably you know her already because she is awesome and she's been around a while. But if you haven't met her yet, follow the link to her channel and please tell her I said hi. Okay, that is how it looks. And I can tell in the back it doesn't look very good, but here it is. And then what I do is I spend about 20 minutes putting my makeup on. I go into the makeup room to do that because that's where my makeup is. I have tons of makeup in there, so it makes no sense to get made up in here. Okay, now you may think that this was about 20 minutes later after I had gone into the makeup room and applied my makeup, but you may also notice that I have a different shirt on. And spoiler alert, this is not 20 minutes later as I had hoped it would be yesterday morning, which was Sunday morning at about 10.45 when I finished spraying the last little bit of hairspray on these rollers. Actually, this is the next morning, which is Monday morning at about 6.30, because just after I finished spraying that last hairspray, my husband came into the bathroom and said that we had had a fire in one of our rental houses. And fortunately, everybody was okay, but in my thought for the day, if you stick around, I'll tell you more information about that. You've always told me that you wanted to see more details about my life. So the real houses are one detail and what happened yesterday was scary and a little bit traumatic, but everything was good, but it does include some lessons for us all. So stick around if you'd like to know a little bit more about fire safety, I guess. Okay, life is just wild. You never know what's going to happen. Every day is something different, it seems like. Okay, so I go ahead, I'll go ahead and show you this hairstyle. 
go ahead and take out all the rollers. And here we go. And oh, I will tell you one thing. I did the Melissa 55 trick on this this morning because this is second day hair and I'm hoping I can still get enough curl in it. So I went ahead and used this. Basically how I did it was that before I curled each section, I would take the section up and, and put this hot iron in here and I keep it at about 380, no higher, because I've heard that your hair can really be burnt. The keratin in your hair can really burn past 380. So I'd leave it in about 10 seconds and then I would you know, heat it up a little bit spray it again with the hairspray, and then just roll it. And so that's what I did. And so I'm hoping that maybe the curl will take a little more since I used the heat. However, that is a very large curling iron and it tends to make volume rather than curl. So I hope I did the right thing. We'll see if we can make this work. That's one thing about this hair. It seems like every day is a new experience. That's why it is so much easier for me to do that flat style that you all out there seem to not like. And, and I guess I get that but it is so much easier than this. But anyway, this is not too bad. I would say it adds an extra, maybe only, well, realistically, maybe an extra 20 minutes to my morning. And it only takes about five minutes to roll the hair. But then, and then you just, you know, leave, leave your hair in curlers as you're getting your makeup on. And then it probably takes an additional 10 minutes on the other side to style it. However, these curlers do get a little bit stuck in one's hair, which is not good. And these clips certainly do. If anybody has any better ideas on these little metal clips, I hope you'll share it in the comments. In fact, if you have ways that you curl your hair that you would like to share, that you get a little more body in your hair, then I hope you'll share that in the comment section below. I have a video coming up about some great volumizing products, which I hope you'll subscribe and click that bell if you'd like to see. However, I'm always on the lookout for really good hair tips. And if you have them, please share them in the comments below. Also, go ahead and share, we'll do a little vote here, if you like my straight hair or if you like curly hair better. And believe me, I don't care either way um, because everybody has their own opinion. Okay, so here, here is the hair, kind of here. And so you just kind of take it and kind of play with it a little bit. I'll get back here so you can see it. So that's what I do and it's got pretty good body right now. And so then I take this little rat tail comb, I don't know if that's what it's called, rat tail brush, and I start adding a little bit of back combing. And I always remind myself that, you know, they say in Texas that the higher your hair, the closer you are to God. Well, I feel a little bit like I'm going into the 80s here that I'm trying to get all this volume that my hair doesn't naturally want to have, but it does work. And I like to have a little puff out on the sides so I'll rat tail comb it a little more right there. This, this one's a little hard to do because I have to use my opposite hand. I had to make sure the record button was on. I've done that before. I've shot a whole video without the record button, which is not fun. Well, today, after this, I am just going into work today with my sister. We have six other girls that work with us. And uh, we're trying to learn a lot more about social media. Oddly, I have a YouTube channel, but I'm not very good with Facebook and all that stuff. Um, so we are trying to get our, our insurance type business a little more into the 20th century. I've got this kind of little messy part and I'm going to go ahead and repart it again. It always scares me to repart it when I think I've got kind of a good hairstyle going because you never know how it's going to do after you try to repart it. In fact, I think I need a little bit more puff up at the top. Go ahead and repuff it. I do think that that curling iron, that big curling iron, which I'll link below, I really do think that that did help. Getting a little bit of heat in there really does help. If you want curlier hair, then probably you would get a smaller curling iron. That's a very large one. That's probably about the largest they have. I think it's a two and a half, two and a half inch. And I'll link that below. Sally's is great. I always forget about Sally's. Now, let me take a look at the back. Sometimes the back is scary. Got my little mirror here. I've repurchased this at Walmart several times. Take a look at the back. Hey, I think the back looks pretty good, girls. I'm happy. Sometimes I look back there and there's a rat's nest. A little bit more here. I think it kind of helps frame your face, especially if you have a wide face, to kind of make sure that Get a little sweep going here. I've always done that my whole life whenever I have a hairstyle like this. 
and I think it does kind of accent your face. One last poof and a little more hairspray. I think that looks pretty good, although I have to say I'm seeing a little bit blurry right now because I have a temporary contact in. My new one should be in any day. I'm so excited. Okay, let's go ahead and spray that. I just give that a nice spraying with my Kenwood 25, which was an award-winning hairspray. And I can certainly see why this stuff is fabulous. And I just poof it up one last time. One last poof. Okay, and I'll see you in the makeup room. And as I mentioned, when I was right in the middle of styling this hair, we got the terrible notification from one of our residents that they had had a fire. And she called and she talked to my husband, Alan, and he said it was a little difficult to understand her because she was a little bit incoherent, obviously, but all he knew was that there had been a fire that had started in the living room. And so we had no idea the extent of this fire. And he said, do you want to go? And I'm like, yes, I definitely want to go. So basically after I'd hairsprayed my rollers yesterday, we hopped in the car and we ran over to the rental house, which is clear across town. And as we were driving over there, we were talking about the fire and how she'd said it started in the living room. And so we thought, oh, it's probably a small little fire. And, you know, we go in there and probably have to repair a little something. And on the way over, we were talking about the fact that we were so thankful that our residents, that they were just fine. It was a wonderful man and his wife living there with their two little kids, a cute little three-year-old and a new baby about a year old. And so we were so thankful for that. And when she said it was a fire that started in the living room, we thought, well, that's kind of an odd place for a fire to start. We wondered about that. But we thought, oh, it must be kind of a small little deal. Well, when we get there, there were three huge fire trucks there, and it seemed like about 20 firemen. And these are some of the pictures of what we saw when we got there. And I've never really been at a fire scene to know really what happens, but basically the firemen come in, they cut a hole in the roof to let the heat and smoke out, which apparently was one of the first things that they did. They start fighting the fire, once they get the fire out, they keep redousing, and then afterwards they start shoveling out the house and they start throwing things out of the house. And here's a look at them throwing things out of the back of the house. Firemen broke down the glass doors and started throwing things out because they had to make sure everything was very doused with water. They're amazing. color scheme was gray and white. It was really cute house. Not anymore. There's some play toys. It's probably the saddest thing of all. We just installed a new air conditioner, great unit, like um, two weeks ago. And it actually does seem like it escaped. But I think the ductwork is probably gone. Well, I thought I'd show you the damage that a fire can do by looking at the before and after pictures. Here's the outside of the home. It's a great home in a nice, quiet little neighborhood. At least it was. Here's the living room and dining room. We have gray walls and white trim and nicely finished floors. You can see the little barn door over in the right. And the last picture on the right is after the fire, of course. And as my husband said, the drywall did its job and basically the joists were saved, which will be positive in the restoration. And here is a look at the kitchen. It had new kitchen cabinets, countertops and sink. It had stainless steel appliances, really nice little kitchen in the before. But as you can tell, the fire decimated it. And the last before and after is the small bathroom. And as you can see, it looked very nice in the before picture, but the fire totally destroyed it. You can see the vanity has to go, the mirror, probably even the shower and all those tiles. In the last picture, you can see the shape of the shower and it is not too good. Well, this is the aftermath of the fire. The fireman left. And there's some board up people coming to board up the house. Got some McDonald's there, so we can eat. And we ended up spending the whole day there because we wanted to make sure our residents were taken care of. A few little details that were interesting. First, fortunately, our residents had renter's insurance. And for those of you who rent, you have got to go get renter's insurance. It is only 10 to $15 a month. You can call your car insurance company and they can give you a very inexpensive renter's insurance policy. And I did not realize this, not only did that renter's insurance cover all of their possessions, 
so it would replace everything that was destroyed in the fire, which was pretty much everything in the house that they owned. It also pays for lodging for up to a year while your rental house is being rebuilt, although we always want to be kind to our residents. And in a case like this, we said, hey, your lease is null and void. We gave them back their security deposit saying, hey, <laughs> you kept the house pretty well. And so, you know, they're going to get $800 or something like that, which will help them out. And we told them either they could find another rental house if they, if they needed to, that was just fine, or if they wanted to live in the housing that the rental insurance company provided, we would sure let them come and move back into the house, which we will fix up absolutely beautifully with new kitchen, new bathroom, new everything. So it will be wonderful. And two other details which were interesting is that the firemen told me that after a fire, you of course need to get the house boarded up so no looters come in and it's not a danger to the other residents in the neighborhood. So they had us call 1-800-BOARD-IT-UP or something like that. And we called them and they came out later in the afternoon, maybe about four o'clock, and we were there from about 11 o'clock on. So it was the very end of the fire when the fire was obviously out and everything had been taken care of. And they come in and they board up the roof there and they board up all of the windows and doors of the house so no one can break in, which is really neat. And another thing which was truly wonderful is that someone on the scene, maybe the fireman, I don't know, had called the Red Cross. And so maybe about 3.30, as we're all sitting in our cars, kind of waiting for the boarded up people to come, this wonderful woman and a young man came from Red Cross and they offered them food and clothing and shelter if they needed it. Absolutely wonderful. So always remember that if your family is going through something like this, you can call the Red Cross and they will come in and give you assistance. I always kind of thought the Red Cross was just for big disasters, but apparently it's for our little disasters too. And I'll put a little link below to the Red Cross if you'd like to give something, that would be wonderful. I do plan to do that myself. And one other thing that I was left with, which is kind of a thought for the day actually, in addition to having renter's insurance, not only did all of us that knew the residents pitch in and try to do what we could, but neighbors came out to help. In fact, the residents next door neighbors was this wonderful couple who kept their kids all day long and just made sure that those kids were totally well taken care of. And that was absolutely beautiful to see. And then another woman who lived a few blocks away didn't even know our residents. She came by and she was trying to think of what she could do and she realized that for some reason she had gotten some clothes from a daughter-in-law who was just the size of our female resident. And so she went up and talked to her and asked if she could bring her some clothes and a resident said yes. And then at the end of the day, she comes up with a little carry-on suitcase, you know, pulling that along. And it's filled with just wonderful clothes that our female resident could wear. And it was just so wonderful to see that she didn't even know our resident at all and yet she was asking herself, what can I do to help? And I was reminded that there still are an awfully lot of good people in the world. And while I'm talking about good people, I cannot say enough about firemen. I have to say that firemen are exceptional. And if you have a fireman in your family, then I hope you mention that below so that we can thank them for what they do because we all know firemen are just wonderful and we can't do without them. But yesterday I was totally reminded of the fact that they were doing everything they could to help this family. Not only do they risk their lives going into this fire and fighting this fire, but all day long they were asking what they could do for the family. They were assisting us in knowing the next steps of what we should do on this because we've never been through a fire before. Firemen are truly wonderful, and here's a look at some of them after they'd calmed down a little bit after the fire. <laughs> Well, that's the end of my kind of interesting experience. And if you have any hair tips you'd like to share, please share them in the comments section below. Or if you've been through a fire, and especially if you have any tips of how we can support our residents now, please leave those comments too. Well, I guess that wraps it up and I'll see you in my next video.